Hi there, it's Floyd from Protocol. I'm here with uh, Ray Boza. He's the manager of uh, Generic Engineering and uh, a user of the EnviroPaste, a stainless steel product uh, for pickling and captivating. And he's got a couple of large jobs. Ray, uh, maybe you can explain what you're working on. Yeah, these are wastewater treatment tanks that uh, we are building for one of our top clients. And uh, they're called 316 stainless steel. And He's got a lot of... Maybe I'll just go over to the tank, yeah, what he's talking tank. about. And it's this tank here hasn't been sprayed yet, right? No, this one hasn't been cleaned yet. We still need, prior to uh, applying the acid, we will be degreasing it. We take it outside and degrease it to remove any surface oils or contaminants. And uh, then we'll bring it into our shed and then uh, proceed to spray it with the Enviro paste. And we generally leave it overnight. Uh, and we leave it on for even just only a couple of hours, but we prefer to leave it overnight, let it do the work. So then the next day we can bring it outside and just pressure wash and hose off all the uh, paste and all the contaminants and dirt. Uh, Ray, the one tank next to it is one that you've completed. Uh, this has uh, been... Uh, uh, pickled uh, and captivated with the Enviro paste and uh, you you can actually see the significant difference between that one and the one that's unfinished and uh, so Ray explain uh, why you're doing the whole tank well we just find it far more efficient to do the entire tank because it's in contact with uh, water in the interior of the tank. We need to ensure that all the surfaces are clean and uh, corrosion resistant. Not only just the inside where it's in contact, but more especially the outside as well too, because of you know chemicals, the atmosphere, the moisture will cause corrosion to occur on the outside of the tank as well. Especially in any of the areas where they've uh, experienced heat due to the welding and or manufacturing, cutting, you know, that, that will create areas where the corrosion will begin to propagate and, and, and easily cause, you know, structural damage to the structure if it's right. not properly cleaned. And you can actually see the significant difference. This is the outside of the tank, and they do. So we're going to do another video uh, showing the sprayability and Ray will walk us through that one uh, when uh, they move the item into the shop. This is another tank on the inside we just videotaped and Ray explain all the areas of concern if yeah. we don't treat this. Well we want to cover the entire surface because in a lot of areas which I explained earlier where any metal has contacted it or scratches that have occurred you can see how there's iron embedded in the scratch and it starts to corrode can see that you know, especially when it's been in contact with water I mean we do it, like you know the a good wet spray is a good way of testing the surface to see if there's any iron contamination right is you hose it down entirely wet it oh. let it sit for several hours or overnight preferably. to see where the iron is and you will see the iron the rust bloom occurring on the surface on the surface so this it's tank will be the one that will be sprayed and these gentlemen right now are just cleaning the just oil and grease and Removing any metal marker that's on it, and the fellow at the end, he's in the process of degreasing it to ensure that we have good contact between the metal and the enviro paste. Perfect. So well, you have adequate cleaning. This one will be going into the shop, and we'll be doing another video of the uh, sprayability. And uh, uh, what we're doing now, this is Ray Boza from Generic Engineering. Uh, and Ray's going to explain uh, what they're doing here. We're spraying the inside of a waste treatment, uh, so a waste treatment plant, right? There was going to, uh, and the safety gear he's got on. He's got some air going through because he's spraying on the inside. He's got the mask, and then Ray, the, the he's putting the mask on over the top. It's just extra safety, and uh, he put together this five-gallon. Um, a uh, pressure pot thing and he's put extra hoses maybe you can explain yeah, why this is this is a lemmer five gallon stainless steel pressure pot uh, that we put together so that we originally we started using a smaller pressure pot which only yep. held about two liters of product in it but for our larger tanks 
we wanted to cut down on the refilling time. So by going to the five gallon pressure pot, we're able to put on a longer hose, which we've upgraded to a one inch line for feeding the product so that he gets a faster flow rate and is able to spray a larger and, area. More and the air pressures are, you were saying around 45 PSI? The, the feed pressure is about 45 PSI. And uh, the air atomization pressure, I think he's probably got it at about 80 PSI. 80 PSI. But then he adjusts the amount of air at the gun and gives him a little bit of flexibility to, con to uh, produce the proper spray pattern that, he, right. that he's looking for. Whether he's spraying a wide surface area right. or if he wants to narrow the uh, fan width down to just concentrate on specific weld areas. Right. In this case, we are going to be coating the entire tank. The entire tank. I've asked uh, him if he could just spray and show how it, if you're just doing the welded areas rather than spraying the whole tank, how this works uh, so quick and so fast. So he's going to. Okay, here we go. using the spray method versus using the brush on method. You can see how fast for you. Uh... We, we prefer to leave it on at least overnight. Uh, in this instance, because it's the weekend, we can safely leave it on throughout the weekend mm -hmm. and come back after the weekend and uh, wash off the product. Uh, you know, with using pressure washers. We use right. pressure washers to uh, clean the surface. And, uh, He'll be moving over to here, so this entire tank uh, will be pickled and passivated. And uh, he's already done one inside, which we uh, so we got the before and we have the after. And uh, and uh, Ray, just a second on touching on the uh, uh, cleaning method first uh, is which is really important. What you do? Yeah, it's very critical prior to applying the. Uh protocol cleaner you need to go through and what we always do is use some uh, thinner remove any paint pen marks felt pen marks if there's any stickers adhesives left over from stickers and then that's followed up by using a good quality degreaser to remove any of the surface oils and lubricants or film that's on the material there's always a bit of uh, residue left from you know metal working processes on the uh, material. If you don't remove that, those oils will act as a barrier and prevent uh, the uh, heat tint remover from contacting the actual material and removing any free iron contaminant. You know, you can think of that oil film as like a protective barrier, kind of holding the iron underneath it. So it's very critical to strip that off. Yes, and, and I guess that's in compliance with the uh, ASTM 387. Yeah. Well, you can see the size of this tank, and he's already almost completed one whole section uh, there. So um, I think that's, that's wonderful. Thank you very much, Ray. And it's generic engineering out of uh, Maple Ridge, uh, Pit Metals, I believe, right? Or Maple Ridge, British Columbia. Maple Ridge, British Columbia. He's actually got it set fairly narrow, but then this allows him to get a greater reach, a greater you, distance. You can see he's narrowed it down so he can get the top of this tank. And this tank is probably, how high is it? It's 10 feet. 10 feet, so he doesn't need a ladder. He can just use the gun. And uh, you can see he's just doing the welded zone. He's got a very even pattern on that. And he's almost completed this whole thing in less than five minutes so far. And he can get all the areas uh, easily. You can see now he's going to do the top of the tank. This is a, on the inside, after it's been, the product's been applied, sprayed and washed as for what Ray was talking about, and you can see the difference. Every area has been cleaned up. All the welded zones uh, have been pickled and, uh, and passivated. He's done two tanks.
a significant difference. And uh, Ray, will you be doing these items also? Pardon me? Will you be doing these items also? Yes, these are, these are other little uh, tanks this is for another client of ours. We will be cleaning these as well. Thank you. We'll, uh, we'll uh, go to the spray inversion. 